and welcome back to a fortnight at Freddy Fast Claire's. We're going to be continuing the story today, so if you haven't seen the first two parts, I would highly encourage you to look those up. It will be the very first thing linked in this video description. So, in the first video, we completed the first night. In the second one, we completed the second night, and now we're going to be attempting to complete the third night in this game. And I am incredibly impressed with the story so far. It's really, really good and uh, way longer than I anticipated. I thought I would have to make like one video about this game and I'd be done with it. But here I am with my third video of a fortnight at Freddy Fast Glare. So um, it's just going beyond my expectations. And uh, I'm really, really impressed with all the work that went into this. So without further ado... Let's just continue the story and see what's going on with our character here, Josh. With everything that's happened tonight, the siren call of my bed is highly tempting. Using what spare time I have before I fall asleep at my computer, I catch up on my backlog of shows. Like you should be catching up on the other videos I uploaded. You should be doing the same. <laughs> I end up climbing into bed around 9am and sleeping right through to 6pm. When I wake, there's a text from Smith, or boss. Probably, yeah, making sure everything went alright. Girls checked out. Good job. We didn't do anything weird with the girls. Sending you a little bonus cash. How generous. $200! See, it really, it really pays off to be a good boy. $200 just to keep our meat in our pants. It's... It's a good payoff, I'd say. That was rather nice of him. He seems like a great boss, if a little eccentric. I wonder if he made the animatronics himself, or if he contracted that out. He probably got in touch with Fatal Fire Studio for uh, the animatronics. That's my guess. <laughs> That's my personal guess. The answer to that might explain why the animatronics are so quirky at night. Yeah, yeah, nah, he definitely got in touch with Fatal Fire. <laughs> in any case, I have plenty of time to exercise and end all other matters before leaving for work. Sure. See, I thought you would actually exercise. I didn't think that's what you meant with exercise. Come on, Josh. Don't do it. Instead of giving in to the horny, I work out, as you should, up into the shower, slip into my uniform, then settle in at my computer to continue catching up on shows. My phone buzzes a few hours later to let me know it's time to head to the nightclub. Here we go, baby. Night three. Night three. I can't believe this. I can't believe the pre-alpha version of this game has three nights in it. Uh, and hopefully this will be the good one when it comes to Chiku. We didn't really get to have a proper conversation with her. So this, this better be it. None of the girls are up and awake when I slip into the nightclub. There's an extensive list of tasks that Smith wants me to handle pinned to the door of the security room. Clean up the blood stain in the second VIP booth with a blood stain? What? Which task should I tackle? Pfft, decisions, decisions. Let me just save. To play it on the safe side here. Let's clean up the blood. I feel we probably should start with that in case the police shows up. <laughs> we really should start with that. It's a good thing I have some experience cleaning up blood stains. What? <laughs> what is going on? This is not normal. This is not normal. Unless you work in a hospital. Th that would make sense. Like cleaning up blood stains if you're a nurse or a doctor. Okay, but like otherwise, the hell? Oh, gosh. Before I grab cleaning supplies, though, I check the laptop to see what led to the blood stain happening in the first place. W was it Bonfi? I rewind the VIP entrance camera feed until I spot Bonfi and a guy entering. Bonfi? About three minutes go by, after which the man sprints from the booth, holding a bloody hand to his mouth. Did she just punch him in the face? Bonfi follows him out shouting, I told you no touching! 
A man in a purple suit and black tie arrives ten minutes later. Oh boy. Purple guy. <laughs> Explain, Bonfi. Bonfi's eyes flash blue as she answers. A customer kept trying to touch me, Mr. Smith. Eventually, he got in the way of my pole dancing. And I accidentally kicked him in the face. Oh, it was a kick. My apologies. Bonfi kicked him in the face. It was not a punch, it was a kick. Smith turns, pulls out a phone, dials a number, then starts walking away. The recording only picks up a snippet of his conversation. False alarm. Throw the guy out and rewind, uh, remind him of rule number one. Interesting. I have to go up to the booth to be sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was uh, actual teeth to clean up as well. Yeah, <laughs> there might be a few teeth, indeed. After grabbing the proper supplies, I head up to the second VIP booth. Blood is splattered across the pole floor, along with, as I guess, a few purely whites. The good news is that this should be an easy clean. The surface is metal, and therefore it doesn't absorb liquid very well. Should be, uh, should be simple then. This should be just a quick wipe down while wearing gloves. Keyword, should. Halfway through my job, I feel a presence on my neck and a whispering in my ear. Oh, God. I can't escape it. I can't escape it. Why is it always Fexa creeping up on me? You know you're not supposed to be out of your pod, Fexa. Oh, but I barely use any of my energy today, so I have plenty to spare. I don't care. Doesn't matter. You're not allowed up here while I'm working. I gotta clean up the blood stain. And, and the teeth. Fexa's strong hands slip around my hips and begin caressing my uh, no-no zone through the uniform. But I can smell how badly you need a release. How am I supposed to think of anything? But come on. Fexa! I try to pull away, but she has me firmly in her grip. I can't, can't do that with you. It's rule number one of the nightclub. I feel a nip at my nape. A nip at my nape. I should make a t-shirt with that. Seriously, I feel like this would make for a killer shirt. I feel a nip at my nape. It just, it rhymes. It's, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I don't care about rule number one when such a hot guy reeks of being a pent up. Don't worry, I'll make you feel so good that you won't mind losing your job. No, wait, wait, no, 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 wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait, what? Game... I don't know if I really agree with that. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to prove you wrong. I'm gonna try to prove you wrong, game. We'll just, we'll just restock the soda wand. Whatever that is. Turns out that restocking the soda wand syrup boxes is a sticky affair. I have to disconnect the old boxes, move them for disposal, replace them with the new boxes, then reconnect the tubes. Each step causes the sticky syrup to drip and leak over the floor. Thankfully, none of it gets on me. All I have to do is mop up the mess left behind, and I'm golden. Quick, simple, and relatively painless. And uh, I don't think Fixer's gonna come by here. And there you go. See? Told you. Told you. The camera I clocked the first night in the repair room is set up to be replaced. Okay. Once I'm back into the security room, I turn my attention to the replacement camera feed. It's still filled with static, but not just that. There's someone there. Oh, oh god. Oh god. If it wasn't bad enough, I get a text from an unknown number. Unlike the previous mysterious text, this number is perfectly readable, albeit 666666666666. Even worse, the time code is messed up on the text. Hello. Always watching you. Always. Ask if she needs a hug. <laughs> I'm gonna go for that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need a hug? 
Is that what you need? I don't just expect e text to actually go through, but it can't hurt to try, right? And if I'm gonna try, I might as well swing for the fences. Hey, do, do you need a hug? Would that make things better for you? A hug would be nice. Really nice. Can I come in? No, it's gonna trigger the alarm. It's gonna trigger the alarm. I'll, I'll go meet her in the hallway. I'll come meet you in the hallway. You can't come in the security office. It doesn't work that way. I step out into the hallway, expecting this unknown animatronic to turn the corner at any second, but she doesn't. I wait, and wait, and wait some more. She never appears. When I go back into the security room to check the camera, she's gone. That was... that was weird as hell. Which task should I tackle? Hey, uh, I think that's what I needed to do, though. Like, just offer a hug. That seemed to have done the trick. But yeah, back to trying to clean up the blood. Um, hopefully it's gonna work. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna have no other choice but to... Beat... My meat. Alright, we're back in the VIP booth. I'm gonna try to clean the blood once again. Um, shouldn't have any problems now. Fexa's still showing up though. You know you're not supposed to be out of your pod, Fexa. Please, please just let me go this time. You sure you look like you could use some help? I'm sure, return to your pod. Just, just go away. Fexa withdraws! Calling out as I hear her descending the stairs. Thank goodness. I think we can get through this now. I'm gonna play with you eventually, Josh. You're only delaying the inevitable. That could have been very bad. Yeah, a game over, as we've seen many times. Even with Fexa's distraction, I'm able to finish mopping the VIP booth up and disinfect all of these surfaces in record time. Time to knock off another task off of Smith's list. That should be all of them. That should be all of them. With all of the tasks done, I have two hours to kill. I might as well waste some time on social media or video puppies. <laughs> it's a great way to waste some time. As 6 a.m. rolls around, I stand up, stretch, yawn, and go to change in the locker room now that my shift is over. In my locker room, I find the broken camera and a small golden plushie that looks like Zero. I grab both, compressing the plushie so I can hide it on my person as I drop the camera off back where it belongs on my way out of the club. I've made it through another night somehow. That one was pretty quick. That one was really quick and no signs of Chiku. Congratulations on reaching day three. I hope you enjoy this alpha version demo. That is now the end of the demo. I made it, baby. I made it. Holy guacamole. I really didn't expect for this to be as long as it ended up being. What a, what a ride. What a ride. This was... Well beyond my expectations. Uh, I absolutely adore the drawings. Uh, the characters are on point. You nail the personalities as well. So they look like what they should look like. They act like what they should act like. So everything has been done to perfection. And I would say it's right up there with Fat Nights at Freddy's. Uh, obviously, two very different games. I'm not saying they're the same, I'm saying in terms of quality and in terms of potential, they're both great. Like, they both have infinite potential, and I'll definitely, definitely be keeping an eye on this game right here. Um, the one thing I'm disappointed with is we had many conversations with Frenny, many conversations with Fexa, we had some good conversations with Bonfi, not a whole lot with Chiku. I did the whole thing, and I'm like, okay, maybe if I made another choice, if I picked another choice, it would have brought maybe a conversation with her, but I, I just, I'm not feeling like it would have. I feel like there's just no way to get there, but I might be, might be wrong, I might be wrong. I'll try to get through the game again, make some uh, different decisions, see if it changes anything. But um, yeah, I if I just go back to my saves here, 
I don't know if there's any way to see Chiku. You know what? Before I end, before I end, as kind of a bonus section to my last video for now of uh, Fortnite at Fanny Fast Claire's, I'm going to see if there's any way to talk to Chiku. So I'm going to try different options and see if I can make it happen. Sit tight. I'll be right back. I actually found an alternative path we can take that may potentially lead to more scenes with Chiku. So what you want to do is get back to the office right here when the girls are trying to kick open the doors and instead of searching for a vent or letting them in, you want to tell the girls that they have to be good and wait for you upstairs. So you want to go with the second option right here and they're actually going to listen to you as you're going to see right here. My mind's telling me no, but my body, my body's telling me yes. <laughs> Great song, look it up. <laughs> Thankfully, I... Okay, well, that actually came in handy. I also picked that option. He did that before coming into work. Um, so, seems like it was the smart thing to do. I adopt a sincere, somber tone and speak through the door. Are you all that eager to get rid of me? You know if Mr. Smith finds out that I won't have a job anymore, right? There's a pause. Then each girl's answer is in turn. You make an excellent point, Mr. Black. Sorry, I just got lost in a moment. Yeah, I feel bad now. Sorry. We... I don't want you to have to leave. I just haven't had a good... A good dance party in ages. I'm just horny because I'm a rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> That sounds like something Bonfi would say. Oh, and Chiku, Chiku just... Chiku just wants cuddles. Well, if you're all promised to be good, go wait for me upstairs as I try to figure out if I can get the lights back on. Can you do that for me? Sure thing, Mr. Black. Yeah, yeah, you got it. I'll hop right up there. And she Cuddles again. This was definitely the smart thing to do. I, um, I don't regret coming back here. I don't regret coming back here. Uh, it was really, really the smart thing to do. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am right now. I'm having a blast. Uh, I hear them shuffling away without the cameras. I have no idea if they've actually got upstairs or I've just moved down the hallway. They could be waiting to pounce me the moment I leave. No, I think, I think they meant it. I think they're being honest. Aside from the laptop screen, all I have is the flashlight built into my phone. Looks like I still have a signal too. That might be useful. Do I trust the girls or find somewhere to hide? Trust in the girls and go check the breakers. I, I think they listen to me. I head for the VIP stair access and climb up. Waiting for me in one of the boots are the four girls. Their eyes are all green now for some reason. And there should be an opportunity to speak with Chiku. I'm really hoping that's going to be our chance. I check the breakers and it looks like power's out for this portion of the city. We have the club to ourselves at the moment. No chance of being overheard. We got some privacy too. For a moment, I swear the way Fexa licks her lips and her eyes narrow means she's about to pounce me. Yeah, she's got... Hmm. She's got a weird look in her eyes. But then she's back to normal. She moves aside, batting the space between her and Chiku for me to come sit. And look at her. There she is. There she is. There she is. <sighs> well, we aren't going to dance with you, as promised. Come take a seat. I slip past Franny and Fexa, doing my best not to rub against them too much. I don't plan on doing anything with them either, for now, but I don't want to give Mr. Smith any excuse in case he checks them out thoroughly in the morning. Yeah, I could... You can't check the cameras, but you can check the animatronics, so... That's true. As I settle in, Chiku moves closer to lean on my shoulder and hold my arm between... Or, wait, what? That was... That was that's an ex. That was an accident. The, the arm shouldn't have gone there. I thought you were gonna put, you know, your arm over his shoulder or something. That's not what I... Come on, now. So what's with the green eyes? I've seen blue and red, but not green. Green means we're not being limited by our restraints. Red means those restraints are either stopping us from acting or we don't have the right permission to do something. Blue is just us interfacing with the main server. 
so right now, you're all purely you. In a matter of speaking, yes. For the first time in... How long has it been, Fexa? Two years, five months, 16 hours, 52 minutes. Do I need to go on? How many seconds, please? Uh, that will do. Thank you. The point is, Mr. Black, that we have the rare opportunity to speak and act both earnestly and completely truthfully. Well, that sucks. You know, that really sucks. I will say, they should be more free. The girls need some more freedom. Hopefully, like, when the full game is released, that's going to be something we can do. To just release them from the server or whatever it is, whatever controls them, so they can just be them. A number of questions come to mind, but one sticks out in particular. I won't lie, that's kind of fucked up, and it's got me thinking. After seeing you all yawn yesterday morning, I have to ask, were you four always animatronics? All of the girls' eyes flash red for a brief second. I think I asked the exact wrong question when they turned back to green. No. Chiku says no. We can't talk about it directly, it's part of our core programming. That remains even when the main server connection is lost. Huh. Re really top confidential stuff. As Buffy stands to lazily twirl around the stripper pole, Freddy picks up the thread of conversation. I, I, I want to hear more from the chicken. She just said no. <laughs> I'd like to hear more. What we can say is that someone once came close to figuring out a way to remove all her limitations and let us truly be free again. But then Mr. Smith found out and threw him out for going crazy. Yeah, that was me. It's part of the, it's part of the lore. That was me. I got thrown out. I got thrown out. I was like that close to figuring it out. All right. I managed to get a job in the nightclub. I got super duper close. And then boom, Mr. Smith found out about it and kicked me right out. But I was close. Real close, man. True story. That must be the guy you mentioned from a year back. Yep. Yep, that was, that was me. I don't get it, though. Why go through all this effort and that limit you so much? Why am I getting secret messages and weird instructions? What was the first thing you did when you were mostly free was to try to mess with me? Well, that's easy. You're hot. And messing with someone makes, us, makes me feel not like this. That's fair, I suppose. As for the rest, Mr. Smith is using you as, uh, using us as prototypes. He's hoping to iron out all the kinks so he can mass-produce girls like us and expand the nightclub across the country. Oh, well, that is not necessarily a bad thing. They should open up nightclubs in Canada. I'd be, I'd be, uh, man, I'd be right there. It would be a lot easier than when I worked at that one. Joke's on him. I'm kinkier than a garden hose. One feet. I... What? <laughs> that doesn't really make sense. Like, can't cure that a garden hose? Um, uh, I don't know what to say. That sucks. It really sucks. Does that mean the past night guards all found out about you or violated the don't mess with the animatronics rule? The last guy tried to... F you don't have to call me out like that. I thought you'd keep that to yourself! This sucks, it really does, and I want to help if I can. Fexa puts a finger underneath my chin and turns my head to look at her. Then she boops my nose. That's simple. We gotta use Smith's own rules against them. The plot thickens. How do we do that? I don't even have admin access to the security room's laptop. Well, I actually, I do. I believe the answer lies in the fifth pod, you know? The one without a name tag. I've heard Mr. Smith talking about creating another girl, but I've never seen so much as a frame for one. Oh, zero. We're talking about zero. Maybe it's in his office or the server room. Could be, or memories get wiped whenever we go into either location. Oh my god, that really sucks too. That's seriously heavy. I'm glad I asked, but jeez. I can't help but look at the girls in a new light after hearing all this. I instinctively, tur uh, I instinctively turn to Pat Chiku's head as I try and change the subject to something more pleasant. Maybe I can find a way to get them talking about themselves indirectly to get around that pesky core programming. Let's shift gears for a bit. This is a rare opportunity for me to get to know each of you as individuals. Anyone want to volunteer to go first? Bring it, dude! Alright, first question. Let's say you're given the chance to have any job in the world, free of this place. What would you do? 
Fexa considers my question before blushing and murmuring. Probably an architect by day and a stud spit by night. The lore expands, baby. The lore expands. Fexa the architect. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? I see, I see. What about you, Franny? Oh, an idol for sure. That or a voice actress. And you, Bonfi? Still a stripper. Bonfi would just remain a stripper. I looked at Chiku and asked quietly, You better! You gotta be careful with Chiku. And you? A nuclear engineer. Chiku is gonna be the next Oppenheimer. See, I knew that. Now everyone does. I, I've always known that. Like, we talked about it. We had conversations about that. She does want to be a nuclear engineer. She's uh, totally serious about that. You know, we got the, the father of the nuclear bomb. You're looking at the mother of the nuclear bomb right here, folks. Chiku brightens, brightens up a little at that, which makes everything worth it in my eyes. I couldn't have said it better myself. That's exactly my reaction. All right, next question. What's the most embarrassing thing you can remember doing? I don't want to talk about it. What she means to say is that she once had to perform as a fox girl maid. She was the cutest thing ever, but hates putting on the outfit. As for me, let's see. Probably the time I spilled beer all over an executive that Mr. Smith was trying to court. That wasn't embarrassing. That was awesome. Totally done on purpose. As for me, I'm not really embarrassed by anything at this point. I turn once again to Chiku. Get asked quietly. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. I appreciate the writing. I really appreciate the writing with how the character approaches Chiku. That is masterfully done. Very, very well executed because that's how you need to talk to Chiku. You need to be careful. You need to be a bit more quiet, a bit, you know, nicer. Because she's, uh, she's fragile, you know? Okay, I won't. You don't have to say it. You don't have to say it. Next question. Ever roleplayed outside sexy stuff? The girls look at me like I'm crazy. Pfft, nerd. I mean it. It might be a good thing for us to do when the power's out like this, unless you want to play cards or Monopoly or something. Fixer cheats at Monopoly. Though. Of course she does. Of course she does. I can't... Of course you cheat at Monopoly. I knew it. The moment I saw her, I was like, definitely a cheater at Monopoly. The lore expands. Okay. <laughs> you do. You certainly cheat. You do too. Bouncing your boobies in front of a guy and promising he can get a bunch of nudes from you in exchange for boardwalk and park place is totally cheating. It's a legitimate strategy. If I can ask anything more, the lights begin to flicker back to life. I leap up so as to not get caught by the cameras, and the girls do likewise. Damn, our time's up already. Will any of you remember this conversation once the server's back up? During the night shift, yes, but we won't be able to access that data during the day without Mr. Smith finding out. Dang it. We really gotta get them their freedom. Now, alright, everyone back to your pods. I'll go sing a song for Smith to grill me about later. With any luck, I'll have a solution to this soon. Deal? They all nod, then we all sprint to our respective rooms. Alright. And I think that brings us back to where I was before. Just to let you know, Mr. Smith, I didn't do anything with the animatronics. All I did was watch them as they stood in place. You were right. All, all I had to do was order them and they listened. The laptop does not comment. Okay, and then he's gonna reply. I just got a notification the power's back as well as the laptop feed. You did good, kid. Okay. Yeah, and that brings us back to where we were, I think. And then we just check the vents. Yeah, 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 okay. So, man, uh, I certainly feel like this was worth it. I certainly feel like this bonus section of the video is going to be interesting for you guys. It was for me. 
it was for me. Give us an opportunity to learn a lot more about the girls. Oh, geez, sorry about that. My headphones, oh no. I got a text message. Uh, is it the same mysterious person from uh, <laughs> the game here? No. Uh, it's Chiku saying, okay, it's a text message from Chiku. She's saying it was it was another guy. All right. All right. It was someone else. See, that confirms it. That conf Chiku wrote to me. Chiku wrote to me. We're still um, getting along perfectly fine. So it, it was someone else. It was someone else. It was just someone else. Okay. That's all it is. Thank you for watching all of this. Uh, this was an incredible series. And it will continue in the future. I'll be back whenever there's more of this. So, yeah. This, uh, this has been very interesting. And uh, thank you so much for watching once again. Take care of yourselves. And uh, I'll see you in whatever I do next. So with that, as always, take it away.